We talk Michigan State football recruiting for 2024-25 with recruiting expert Max Torres. But first, we might not be getting Tony Grimes here in East Lansing, but that's okay. Nothing matters because Steven Izzo scored. Let's go! You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Lockdown Spartans is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J A S E medical.com. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Lockdown Spartans listeners, thank you so much for either kicking off your week with us here at Lockdown Spartans or spending some of your weekend with us here at Lockdown Spartans. I'm your host, Matt Sheehan. If you ever want to reach out, lockdown spartans at gmail.com. Please rate review, subscribe, comment below on YouTube, smash that five-star button if you're listening to it on the podcast, and away we go. Seconds two and three, it's going to be a lot of football recruiting talk. We're also going to talk Aiden Childs, Tanner Miller, Jack Velling with Max Torres, who is from the West Coast, so he is very familiar with a lot of these players. But first, we have to talk about this basketball game, and then we'll get into a little bit why former five-star Tony Grimes isn't going to be coming to Michigan State. But first. Let's talk about something that's even bigger than the game, something bigger than Michigan State beating Rutgers 73-55. to Steven Izzo, by God, he finally actually did it. He scored. And it was getting a little dicey in his career of, oh, God, is he ever going to do it? He had a golden opportunity against Baylor in the double bonus, and he shot two free throws as if he had eight seconds to shoot them both. He was a little rushed there. Both clanked off the iron, no good. And then, oh my goodness gracious, the last time he was on the court at Breslin Center, forced a shot up, got absolutely swatted on one, and you're starting to think, is it ever going to happen? Because kind of like the Pistons losing streak, how eventually it got so deep into losing streak that no team wanted to be the one that lost to them. So they got, it turned out, a lot of other teams' A games. At the end of that losing streak, hey, Steven Izzo hasn't scored. I think players on the other team are hip to that, and now they don't want to be the guy that Steven Izzo scores against. So that happened, too, in this game against Rutgers. He was draped on in defense, so much so that they fouled him. After he hit the nice little crossover at the top of the three-point arc, that's right, fouled him, clink, clank, clunk, in the hoop. It went Steven Izzo scores, and my goodness gracious, you would have thought the roof was going to blow off the Breslin Center. You would have thought. This team just punched their ticket to Phoenix for a Final Four with the way they reacted, as it should be. This was a long time coming. What a great moment for Steven Izzo, the team, the Iz zone, all the fans there, and, of course, for Tom Izzo himself, who just chalked it up to, hey, one of the thrills of fatherhood. So, just like Steven Izzo, as he was walking to the free throw line, I think a lot of us in Spartan Nation breathed a deep sigh of relief because, finally, Finally, it happened. You do not want Senior Day to roll around and part of his highlight package just be, oh, yeah, he got a rebound here. He had an assist here. No, no, no. He is in the score sheet finally. First time in his career. I believe it was 43 games, but who cares how long it took. Steven Izzo, he did it, and he did it in style and one fashion. Also hit the free throw, too. Could not think of a better way to end the game on Sunday. And I guess we should talk about the rest of the game because there were a lot of fun things that happened the previous 39 minutes of game time. And we're going to point to the bench here because Michigan State had 26 points off of their bench. Rutgers only 15. Now, I do want to pull out a certain player here. Trey Holloman, nine points, six assists. Uh, Solid game. No turnovers for him. Maybe his best game against a Power 5 team so far this season. A stat that I want to point out, though, with Trey Holloman, three of six from three-point land. I don't even want to focus on the three that he made, and that's awesome. That's how he got to his nine points, obviously. What I love to see is the six, the six shot attempts from three-point land from Trey Holloman, because if there's two things that we have seen so far from Trey is that, hey, he's actually 
he's actually a good three point shooter this year, which is something that I didn't see coming, especially after last year where he shot somewhere in the low 20 percentile for three points. But right now he came into this game as a 40 percent shooter. We've seen enough of a sample size so far this year to believe that Trey can actually maybe sustain that number. He has 43 point attempts going into this game. So that's why we like to see the six by because that's number one. Okay, you can shoot the three point pretty well, but what we've seen number two is how timid he could actually be in these conference games or against big time opponents. Yes, he had that great game earlier this year against Alcorn State where he laid or uh, sorry seventeen points on them, shot a lot of three pointers, but in the Big Ten games he would take a step back a little bit. Like the last two games against Illinois against Northwestern, just two combined three point attempts. It's like Trey, my man. We're shooting 40% so far. You're actually a three-point threat. Let's fire away. So I don't know if it has to be as high of a number as six attempts per game. I mean, if he's shooting at 50% like he just did on Sunday, no one's going to say no to six attempts per game. But, hey, man, we, we are in need of a guy that could space the floor with a three-point threat. Let's start getting off four shots, five shots from behind the arc every single game. Not not these games where just, oh, yeah, no, it's a, we're just going to shoot one. No, this was great to see from Trey. So just want to point that out. That's one of the things that have been kind of a pet peeve of mine in the last few weeks is that, dude, we can shoot. Let's stretch this floor with you. Now, other performances that we do want to point out really quick. Tyson Walker, eh, 13 points, 4 of 12 shooting, but 4 assists, just 1 turnover. And Jaden Akins, he made his time count. 9 points, 4 rebounds. Also, what I like to see, 5 personal fouls. That's right, making that count. And the Ken Palm MVP of the game, Malik Hall, 15 points, 6 rebounds, 2 assists. And we're going to do this again. Because this is all we can do in the Malik Hall era, where it's just up and down, up and down as a roller coaster. But, hey, with those downs that you get when he plays 26 minutes and doesn't record a single stat, it's really bad. Oh, my goodness. You can always count on him to come back up to the top. It is truly letting your highs get too high and your lows get too low. So it's just more of the Malik Hall roller coaster. But today was the good side of it. Again, I'll rattle off that stat line. Again, 15 points, 6 rebounds, 2 assists. Now the next game up. For our Michigan State Spartans, Thursday against Minnesota. Minnesota, not the Minnesota that we remember from last year, who was just absolutely atrocious. Now, we can expect Michigan State to win this game still, but, hey, Minnesota is going to be a little bit of a spicy team here. I'm going to pull up what Michigan State will be favored by this Thursday, should my internet cooperate here. And Michigan State is going to be projected favorites per BartTorvik.com by 13.6. Points. Now, really quick, we're going to switch to the football field here because, hey, remember uh, last week, Tony Grimes, former five star, three year starter at North Carolina, was at Texas AM, never played because of injury. He transfers to Michigan State. He commits to Michigan State, and he could be an instant day one starter for our Spartans. Not so fast, my friends, is what the admissions department has said. There has been a snafu with his admissions here. Now, whether that's grades, whether that's whether credits transfer over here to Michigan State or not, I, I can't be certain. But look, we we look at Michigan State through a very good lens. All of us, actually, by and large, the majority of the nation and academia looks at Michigan State through a very good lens. One of the best public universities you can go through, ranked very highly in many, many departments. With that said, though, I don't, I can't remember the amount of times that admissions has been an issue to get a transfer from somewhere here. So that's you got to almost be going out of your way here to come up short uh, on the admission requirement here to get to Michigan State. But that's where things are right now. Tony Grimes looking like it's not going to be working here. If you just go to his Twitter, he's retweeting a lot of UNLV stuff. So it looks like UNLV, they have the admissions department that could accept him. So off he goes. Now, I'm not going to you know do a full 180 on what we just talked about last week. And last week, I think we painted a pretty good picture of it is that, yes, he can be an instant contributor. No, he's not going to be the former five-star. There's a reason that he's a former five-star and still working his way through college and is not in the NFL yet, but still could have been a solid piece of this cornerback room. And I still feel that way about it. Losing him, it's not the best news in the world. 
This is a guy that maybe could have been a starter opposite of Chance Rucker. Maybe that slides Dylan Tatum inside to that nickel slot corner position. But now that he's gone, okay, now we're back to square one with Chance Rucker on one side, most likely Dylan Tatum on the other side. But at the end of the day, I, it's, it's not like we just saw Sauce Gardner just leave and go to UNLV because our admissions department was a little too stingy. Like I, It's, it, it's tough. Rather have him than not have him, but I, it's nothing that we're going to lose too much sleep over. It is how I sum it up. That That's my two cents on it. So we're going to be uh, getting more into football here with Max Torres here in a hot segment. First, I need to talk your ear off about fan dual sportsbook the nfl regular season is wrapping up but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, america's number one sportsbook right now new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a five dollar bet that is 150 bucks in bonus bets win or lose the app is super easy to use and there's so many different ways to bet like live same game parlays you can find bets in the new explore tab make a parlay in the parlay hub the best way to find popular parlays or one of my favorite bets that ultimately ended in heartbreak here on Sunday is that you can bet on the correct score of a college basketball game. I bet Michigan State 70, Rutgers 55. That would have happened. That would have happened. If Steven Izzo did not score at the end of the game, I would have had $2 to pay $680, bucks, and I would be going to the Lions playoff game tonight, but that's okay. That's part of the chase. That's part of the thrill. And honestly, the only reason I'm not bashing my head against the wall is that it's the butterfly effect of if Steven Izzo doesn't score, does Rutgers shoot a three? Do they make the three? So it's all good over here. But, man, it's the rush that you get with betting on a correct score. So go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to make your bet. Sorry, make your first bet a layup. It's FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. This recruiting segment of Locked on Spartans is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. All right, folks, we have not just a recruiting expert over here. No, 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 no. This man comes from the heart of big 10 country. Of course, I'm talking about Long Beach, California, because that's just how it's going to be these days. Uh, welcoming on the publisher of Ducks Digest recruiting expert, Max Torres. Max, how on earth are you doing today, my man? I am doing great. I'm loving the vibes early on and uh, just stoked to be on the show. Thanks for having me, Matt. That's the spirit. That's what I'm talking about. So, hey, we've been asking a lot of people about their thoughts on Jonathan Smith, all the Oregon State transfers. I've been talking about it. We've had experts on. But just like I said, like this is kind of somewhat in your backyard, so to speak. You are very familiar with a lot of these players, not just from their college days, but also their pre-college days. So we'll get to Aiden Childs, Jack Valley, Tanner Miller here in a second. But let's just start with the broadest overview. The man of the year right now for Michigan State, Jonathan Smith. What do you know about him? Do you like the hire? What's what's just your two cents on Jonathan Smith going to Michigan State? Jonathan Smith to Michigan State is going to be, I think, one of the better hires that we've seen this offseason. Um, I think that just watching him uh, during his time at Oregon State, he kind of felt like he was one quarterback away. And then they got DJU in from from Oregon or sorry, from Clemson, excuse me. Yeah. Now he's heading to Florida State. What a crazy offseason it's been. But, uh, but he, I mean, they were like kind of one quarterback away, and then I think they that really helped them take that next step. But the, the case in point for me, Matt, is that Jonathan Smith has always been one of the better coaches in the Pac-12 while he was there. I think over the past three, four seasons, you really saw them start to take that step forward. They were always really solid, and I think there were a lot of opponents in the Pac-12 that said, oh, shoot, we have to play Oregon State now, like, Late October, yeah. late November, that's not a team we wanted to face. But J Jonathan Smith is always a guy I think that's done more with less. I kind of put him in that same category like with Kyle Whittingham at, at Utah. Just going to have his guys ready yeah. to go. Has, has never had crazy talent, but he's going to give his opponent their best shot and everything they can handle on any given Saturday. And one of those guys that you were alluding to, you know, he needed his quarterback. Yes, he had DJU, but also... Hey, the other man of the year for Michigan State right now, Aiden Childs, 35 pass attempts over in college. But of course, you know, 24-7 sports rated him as the number one quarterback in the transfer portal. Michigan State fans know the, the hullabaloo around Aiden Childs. But you know a little more about him. You're, you're beyond just the 35 pass attempts in college. You've known him because, again, you're out in Cali. 
so is Aiden Childs. You've seen him play a little bit for college. What have you seen from Aiden Childs in his journey to where he is in Michigan State right now? And uh, is he going to lead Michigan State to a 15-0 season? Let's just cut to the chase. Aiden Childs is certainly one of the more interesting names that I've come across in, in my time covering recruiting recently. I uh, got to see him on the camp circuit uh, when he was a junior. And then fast forward a little bit to his senior year, I got to actually see him face off in, in one of the better high school rivalries in my area that is Downey where Aiden went to high school and then uh, against Warren. And that was okay. Aiden Childs versus Nico Iamaliava, who is looking like the incumbent starter out there at the University of Tennessee. And boy, that was a duel. Um, Aiden Childs just really had it going that game. It was super, super back and forth. Um, certainly a guy that can hurt you with his legs, but also I think seeing him those two instances, I saw him at that camp, Matt, and I was like, okay, so this is Aiden Childs. You know, he's kind of, starting to get some momentum, but I didn't think he looked like amazing necessarily, but mm -hmm. he was dialed in uh, when I saw him uh, his senior year in, in that game. Certainly someone who can, can make all the throws that you're looking for. And I think he really fits what Jonathan Smith needs in a quarterback, just in terms of how he carries himself. Uh, when, when Downey needed a shot from him, he was there to give it to them in that game. So really your prototypical dual threat kind of guy. I, I think that, um, he is going to be a very valuable asset for that Spartans offense this year in 2024. And kind of just the coolest part of following his story, like I told you when I saw him at that camp, he was still a relatively unknown guy. But then, mm -hmm. you know, myself and the rest of the country were starting to wake up to him because fast forward a little bit after that, a couple months after his senior year, I saw him in San Antonio at the Adidas All-American Bowl holding his own and, and really putting the country on notice. And you're like, wow, well, this guy's an Adidas <laughs> All-American. He must be doing something right. So that is a huge addition. I mean, having a quarterback that you're comfortable with, that is familiar with your head coach, it's it's really setting up for success and at least a strong start for the Spartans. And we also took away two other offensive weapons from the Oregon State program as well. And that's Jack Valley in the tight end. Of course, most tight end touchdown catches in the nation last year. And then also on the inside of that offensive line, Tanner Miller. Now, you could choose your own route here, Max. You could either pick these guys apart one at a time, or I just put you on the hot seat and say, this is a question I love asking people, which one do you think is going to be more important for Michigan State next year right off the bat? Ooh, uh, that's yeah. a good one. I'm going to go – oh, man. I think I'm going to go Jack oh. Belly. That, that was okay. really tough. I, I always okay. feel like sometimes I freeze up in those moments when I get put on the spot. But that was a, that's that what was good a good one. That, that's, that's what I'm good for, Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to go Jack Velling just because we've seen some really talented tight ends come through Corvallis in recent years. They're they're really, yeah. I think, a, a mainstay, um, integral part of, of the Jonathan Smith offense. So just seeing his history of using the tight end and then bringing in another big bruising body uh, from his Oregon State roster and Jack Velling, a guy who really took a jump in production from 2022 to 2023, like you mentioned, with uh, the high touchdown numbers. 29 catches for 438 yards and eight touchdowns. I think you see the production from him. You see him as a guy who could likely be a plug-and-play option, I think, in this offense for the Spartans. And, I mean, we also have to talk about Tanner Miller, right? You know, bringing in another talented offensive lineman. I think you, you've you seen with Jonathan Smith's offenses that Oregon State loves to run the ball, absolutely loves to run yeah. the ball. And Miller didn't grade out crazy high. In uh, the PFF terms, you know, depending on how much weight you want to put into those, but I think it's a nice little sure. barometer. Gives us a little bit of background on, on where these guys stack up. He was ranked number 42, the number 42 guard on PFF, 79.9 uh, run block, which was uh, run blocking grade, that is, which is actually 13th among all guards in college football. So I think if you can bring in a piece in the trenches like him, not only does that help your running game, but it helps whoever you're starting quarterback is you know maybe it's Aiden Childs helps him keep him upright not only do you want to keep the pressure off your quarterback you want to establish a good run game I think that that's kind of how the saying goes a quarterback's best friend is a really good run game I don't know if other people have heard that but uh, I think that those are two really really solid additions out of the transfer portal and and they're going to help the Spartans hit the ground running under Jonathan Smith yeah, and those are two, dare I say, dire needs for Michigan State because for the tight end room, it's been about seven or eight years since we've seen a really productive tight end over here in Josiah Price. I don't expect anyone else outside of Michigan State to remember that name, but that it's it's been a while for Michigan State to see production at the tight end spot. And also, 
God, yeah, the offensive line could use some help. And if you have Tanner Miller, who's just built like a cube, just road great in some some run lanes for our guys, that's going to be a welcome sight to these green and white eyes over here. So no you know, winner or loser in that battle. Both are more than welcome here in East Lansing. Still more to come with Max Torres here, but first need to talk your ear off about Jace Medical. Now I know we come to sports to escape from some of the crazy realities of real life, but can we just talk for a minute about preparing for real life? According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade. That is no fun. I cannot imagine a more helpless feeling than if, you know, me, my wife, my kids, my good friends, that's right, I care about them, or anyone gets sick while a supply chain issue is keeping them from getting life-saving medication that they need. Thankfully, we'll be okay because of Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotic treatments to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses like UTIs, respiratory infections, skin infections, and many others. This stuff could happen to any of us. So, be prepared. Visit jacemedical.com and sorry, complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board certified physician and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to get prepared than it is today. So what are you waiting for? Stay prepared. Go to jacemedical.com again, J-A-S-E medical.com and use offer code locked on. That's all one word locked on to get $20 off your order at jacemedical.com. Um, speaking of welcome here in East Lansing, we welcome the 2024 class here. Now it's a solid class. Jonathan Smith did a great job of what I like to call saving face for this class. Cause when he took the job, there was only a handful of commits. They're ranked in the eighties or the nineties overall in the team rankings, but now depending on what you look at, he's like in the high thirties, low fifties, regardless, he filled it with some good talent. A lot of guys were former Oregon state commits, which I'm sure that you're hip to. Are there anyone or, you know, more than anyone from the 2024 class that you want to just pull out and talk about that you think is a really good get for the Spartans here? Yeah, I think when I was doing some research on, on this class and kind of getting a feel for some of the players that are heading to East Lansing, I was kind of thinking to myself, you know, maybe this isn't so complicated. And let's let's dive into the the class headliner and, and Nick Marsh, 6'3", 200-pound okay. wide receiver out of River Rouge. Is that how you say it? Rouge? River Rouge. 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 River up. Rouge. Some stank on it. Yeah, that's I, right. I had to, I had to ask my, my Michigan native. Okay, okay. Yep. <laughs> um, there you go. So, yeah, I think with, with, um, with Nick Marsh, you know, I think he is a guy that you can kind of build your offense around a little bit. I think yeah. a lot of people, when you think about Big Ten offenses, you kind of think about maybe two different things, right? You have – Michigan, the ground and pound running in yep. your running at your face that won the natty this year. But then you also have the Ohio States of the world that have elite wide receiver talent. So uh, I think you get a great weapon in here in Nick Marsh. And he was ranked the number two player in the state this year. So just speaking to the importance of keeping the best guys home, especially Matt, when you have a team like Michigan, that's also yep. going to try to keep those top guys uh, playing their ball in state. So I think that's really important for Jonathan Smith to, to be able to uh, hang on to him, actually, because at one point he he decommitted. I know that was before uh, Jonathan Smith was, was hired, I believe, but uh, wasn't always bound for East Lansing. Um, and then yep. I think also when you're looking at some of the recruiting optics here, there were a lot of really big-time schools going after him. You had Oregon in the mix, Penn State, and, and Pitt as well throw Kansas in the mix there as well. I don't know if people view them as a, a big time school, but Hey, they're, their stocks on the rise. Yeah. So I, yeah. I like the Nick Marsh edition a lot, you know, just getting into some of the specifics that you see with him looking at, at his tape. Um, I love the way that they used him. I think he was a, a red zone target, a guy who could oh, yeah. go up and get it. Uh, win those 50, 50 balls had some great hands. Um, you see the body control and the ability for him to adjust to the ball in the air. Th those are all things that you really want in your wide receivers and the way that they used him. He has special team upside on kickoff return. You see this guy catching screen passes out of the backfield. You see him being used on little pop passes. I mean, you, you want this guy to do something, he'll be able to do it. And then he also has a track background as well. So make sure that you're adding some, some great speed there as well. And from the Oregon State decommits, or I guess, you know, he committed from Oregon State, went to Michigan State. The guys that essentially Jonathan Smith stole away from the Beavers program. You know, that's how we'll pose this. Anyone out of that group really catching your eye over there that you think could be a really productive player for the Spartans down the road? 
Yeah, I think I, I mean it's really kind of the guys that we we already mentioned with with uh, with Miller and, and Velling, um, also Childs as well. Um, I just think it's it's interesting to look at the quarterback situation in particular because that's the most important position uh, on any team. And and if you have a quarterback that can hit the ground running, I think that'll really help you. I, I'm curious, you know, not not to put you on the spot, but I, I would love to hear a little bit about kind of how people are viewing the Aiden Childs edition, because like you said, he, he didn't really play a whole lot in his lone <laughs> season at Oregon state, but when he hit the portal, he was getting a pretty high transfer rating. So not, not to deflect from putting the attention on me, but I'm literally no, just please. trying to kind of hop into the discussion here. Oh, this is always welcome, especially when the conversation is about Aiden Childs, because how did fans view it here? Oh, we almost threw a parade on Grand River, Max, because and that's a double, you know, that's, there's two parts to that. One is because of how electric of a player he is. And we would be lying if we say we didn't see that number one rating that 24-7 sports had him and just saw those neon signs and be like, oh, my God, we're getting – us we're getting the new shiny toy this offseason look at us man but it's a player that you're getting you're getting a true dual threat quarterback and we all know how long that could take you down the road in college football now the second part of why we were so happy and jazzed out of our minds is because max um this has been a long few months here in east lansing uh, we were starved for any 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 form of good news here and uh yeah the fact that that's with a very highly coveted transfer quarterback that, that just made it all the sweeter. So, yeah, we were at at the level that we were going to celebrate literally anything good that happened here in East Lansing, whether it was on the field or off the field. But, man, it, it really just feels like he hit the jackpot because of what his floor is as a quarterback. Obviously, he's the number one guy for two reasons, what his floor is and how high his ceiling can be. So just off the surface alone, you get a guy that's familiar with Jonathan Smith's system, a guy that is a dual-threat quarterback, a guy that can throw what seems like 20-yard line to 20-yard line, like the guy has a cannon for an arm. And then just how high that ceiling can go. So it, that's that is how we viewed it. It's until he takes the first snap against FAU, all that we could dream about is just how great things are going to be going here in East Lansing. So yeah, it's uh, very welcome nice. to, to 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 East Lansing over here. Yeah, man. So <sighs> it's been nice. Um, I'm going to spin the tables back at you, and I can't believe sure. we're talking about this. Th this still seems like a fake year when I say it out loud, but 2025. <laughs> right, like how how that is next year and not 17 years from now I, I don't know I just have no concept of time but uh whatever it's time to talk about it because it's right around the corner do you know any names in the 2025 class that us Spartan fans should already have our eyes on and again that just seems like a crazy question but that's, that's recruiting baby that's recruiting it, yeah it may sound kind of crazy but that's really where we're at in the recruiting calendar right matt you saw a majority of the blue chip recruits signed during the early signing period and now it seems like all the news is just transfer portal and then the the signing period in, in february but not too many folks are, are still on the board to be frank yeah. um so the 2025 class they're on the clock by all intents and purposes and they're starting to take visits get out all throughout the country but uh, there actually is one that I want to spotlight that isn't too far from me. I got to see him this year. Recently landed an offer from Michigan State and Jonathan Smith. We're talking about Anaheim, California, Servite quarterback Leo Hannon. And yep. he is a guy who I think is on the rise as a recruit. He's got 14 reported scholarship offers if you're looking at his 247 profile. Uh, but he played at Servite, which for people who maybe don't know Servite too well, same school that... Uh, produced Arizona quarterback Noah Fafita and wide receiver Tetairoa McMillan. So this is a really, really st storied program out here in Southern California. Uh, honestly, has had a couple of quiet years amid a coaching transition. So I think everyone kind of wrote the Friars off. That's their mascot, the Friars. They do a whole bagpipe introduction and walk up with their team before games. Oh. You got to look it up. It's insane. It's, it's, really, it's really fun to watch, but Case in point here, they they wrote the Friars off and and Leo Hannon really kind of backpacked this team to a playoff appearance. They lost to Mission Viejo, who would go on to win the state title, I believe, over De La Salle, which is oh, wow. a story program out in California as well. But what you need to know about Leo Hannon on the rise that, I, like I mentioned, six foot four, 210 pounds, threw for just under 2,500 yards as a junior, 14 touchdowns to nine interceptions. So maybe you'd like to see a little bit of a uh, a ratio better of a ratio there and then also pitched in 213 yards on the ground so i think like you said uh like i said excuse me you're seeing some schools 
hop in early. You got Arizona, BYU, and Colorado uh, among some of those early contenders. But if you're Jonathan Smith and you're looking for that next quarterback in your 25 class, why not go back to your your roots? You know where you're yeah. from, Southern California. I think if you're going to take a gamble on any quarterback, not that they are, Southern California is where to go. I mean, you, you see the examples all over the place. You know, C.J. Stroud's from yeah. Southern California. Uh, he's kind of the the best. Bryce Young as well. He's having a rough year, but he was a heck of a quarterback too during his high school and college days. No doubt. And let's just get the most important question out of the way. Save it for last. Are you ready for 9 a.m. kickoffs? Or are you ready to formally ingratiate yourself into Big Ten country here? Is is this going to be a welcome sight, or is this going to be a little tough for you over there? Um, that's a really good question. I don't know. I think I think it's a two. It's a not a double edged sword. That doesn't make sense. But there's a two two parts to this thing because I would go to a game every Friday. Sometimes I double up and go Thursday night and Friday night. That's how okay. much football there is out here. Um, yeah. And then uh, I would kind of stay up late and do some work in the morning on Saturdays and then uh, kind of go on with my days. But I'm excited for it because just being able to watch more games on the Big Ten Network, that's definitely going to be uh, you know appreciated after having suffering through the days of the Pac-12 <laughs> Network uh, out west. So I'm excited <laughs> for it. I'm excited for more big time football and, and I can't get enough of it. Um, there was one other guy uh, on the 2025 class that yeah, I, I please, uh, sorry. Yeah. But we, we, we can talk about Leo Hannon a bit if you want. I don't know. I don't want to step on any toes here. Oh, you're good. No, no. Keep, keep it rolling. The, the floor is yours, my man. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Perfect. Perfect. The other guy that I want to talk about actually just came out with a top 10. So I know that's still a little bit early, but um, Michigan State did make the cut. So that's why I think he is someone worth spotlighting and and that is Hesperia, California, Sultana, athlete slash wide receiver, LaMason Waller. He's listed at 6'2", 170 pounds. And um, this is a guy that was formerly committed to UW. Uh, I've been seeing him on the recruiting trail uh, a decent amount in terms of just how active he is. He's taken a bunch of visits. Colorado might be the school that is in the driver's seat right now. Truth be told, he's taken quite a few trips out to Boulder. Um but uh, he's a guy who produced at a pretty high level, 15 touchdowns, uh, just over 1,100 yards, 62 catches. So I think this guy brings a lot to the table. And given, again, that uh, Jonathan Smith is a West Coast guy, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go yeah. back to to that area to kind of try to start building out the 2025 class. So LaMason Waller could be a one to keep an eye on as well. There we go. Love it. And absolutely love all the intel, all the information, Max. Thank you so much. Is there anything you want to plug here before we let you go and enjoy the rest of your day over there in sunny California? Yeah, I'm, the sun's definitely breaking through here. So sorry. My I'm, so jealous. Not the best. I'm so jealous. It's <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but no, yeah, if you if you guys want to find more of me, you can follow me on, on Twitter. I'm not sure if I'm ready to call it X yet. I don't know if you find yourself doing no, that. No, absolutely Matt. not. No, no. <laughs> No, <laughs> but, but you can, you can follow me. The best place to find me is on Twitter and Instagram uh, at M Taurus sports. And then you can uh, read some of the stuff that I'm writing over on ducksdigest.com. Bang Max really do appreciate it, man. And uh, Hey folks, we'll be back here in a hot second. Keep it tuned.